So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video on the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be going through a bunch of different things. This is actually gonna be a clip pulled from one of the weekly Q&A calls that I hold every single week with the community of the Quantum Leap Ecom Agency program. Like I say, we hop on a, a two to three hour call every single week um, and you know, I unmute each individual student and we speak one to one and go through all the pre uh, questions, problems, etc. And this clip that I'm gonna uh, input into this video is actually pulled from last night's Q&A, which actually was around three and a half hours. But I go through, and I think it's really important for a lot of you guys to watch and see and understand because I go through a couple different things. One of the main things that I cover is how you can increase your e-commerce client retainers, right? No, this doesn't work for any other niche. This is just e-commerce. Um, so as I say, I go through how to increase your e-commerce client retainers in a way that makes sense for the client as well as for you personally. And what this is gonna enable you to do, obviously, is make more money, but it's also gonna help you scale. You know, when you go from like, for example, you're trying to scale your agency from like 10 to 30K a month, you don't want to triple your client load. That's not that's not the best way to go about scaling, right? Ideally, you want to just make more from your current clients. So as I say, I cover that in this video and also I'm, I go through kind of how to structure your day as an agency owner and how I'm currently structuring my day right now and how I recommend if you're just starting out, you've maybe got you know a couple clients or maybe you've got no clients. I, and I also cover exactly how to structure your day for optimal efficiency. So, as I say, I hope you enjoyed. The video quality is slightly bad because it was at night, it was recording on my computer, um, and the lighting was terrible. I need to upgrade my lighting, but I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And with that being said, let's jump straight into it. Hey, man, what's up? How's it going, man? It's good to see you in here. Yeah, man. Like, I've been in here for two days and just been going through the course. It's absolutely crazy. <laughs> um, I've got, got a few questions that I've literally been writing down. Uh -huh. So... Um, relative to like the retainer and the ad spend how do you mention that in the call or do you talk about that um beforehand in a chat in the email or do you talk about it on the call like let's yeah. say you're a prospect now and i said um you know we'll charge 1500 for the month how do you bring up the ad spend or do you just mention about like the arrangement with the credit card and paying the ads do you just do it automatically if that makes sense so with ad spend, I always leave it up to the client. Um, I let them have the freedom of exactly how much they want to use, you know? Um, mm. But us at the moment, a lot of our clients are coming through inbound. Um, uh, and, and even the ones that are actually coming through outreach are still spending like a good amount per day. So what we do for those types of clients where they're already spending a healthy amount a day um, we come in, we take over that spend. We inc or It depends where they're at. Um, some mm -hmm. clients are at a really good ROAS and they're at a hundred a day spend. So what our focus is we come in, we obviously take over a hundred a day spend. It's really not a lot. And we take that to a thousand a day spend whilst maintaining the ROAS. That's how we structure that ad spend, right? Other clients yeah. spending 500 a day, a thousand a day, 2000 a day, and they're getting a 1.2 ROAS, a two ROAS or whatever. And they want to bump that ROAS. So we come in, we take over that spend. We bump the ROAS and then we see where they want to go. Do they want to maintain what they're at? Do they want to scale? That's kind of mm. how we've been structuring our spend recently because a lot of our clients, as I say, are coming in at high spends. Um, but what I did when, you know, when it was the lower clients or when, you know, even, you know, if you do bring on a client that's not spending anything, I always just say the retainer, whatever it is that you want to charge plus the ROAS deal, whatever it is, and just go plus ad spend. And then they'll ask about that spend. And then I say, it's completely up to you. You as a client get the complete freedom of exactly how much you want to spend. Because look at the end of the day, some months I understand that you'll have product development or you'll have, um, you know, ex unne not unnecessary expenses, but you'll have a lot of expenses coming out. You need to tame back the ad spend. And I always say like that won't happen. Uh, it's never happened because when clients see that they're putting in a dollar, $2, they're getting, you know, uh, six, $8 back or whatever it is, they never want to turn that off but you do have the option. Um, and then yeah. It's, yeah, I always, I always also say about um, the fact that like, you know, if they want to start to scale, that's fine. You know, uh, just let us know and we'll alter the ads. We'll tailor the ads to suit that. We don't charge more just because you want to scale or whatever. So you have complete freedom of exactly how much you want to spend. Uh, so and, do, you, do you base the retainer off the figures they're doing then and then? 
or like say let's say they're bringing in i don't know um let's say just random figure 100k per month in revenue would like my first client would i just say like 1500 a month retainer plus roas or should i just mention that first and then see how the results go from there or how would you um it depends how confident you are that's that's one thing um and also i would say um just go more just just always add on a roas deal it's never going to hurt you mm. um and you know you can only make more from it you know yeah sorry to interrupt so like with um with like the roas deal it sounds quite small like 10 20 percent but like if you're making them i don't know let's say i get a media buyer which is what my plan is um going through your course been following everything mm -hmm. i'll get the media buyer on board obviously utilize his results to get a, you know a prospect on the meeting and um talking about the roas i wasn't sure if that would make a huge difference if the results aren't big if you make sense if that makes sense so should i just base it off a retainer depending on how they are on the phone you, you what do you mean that? so 10 10 15 20 percent is a lot of money if you're getting good results yeah okay right? it's like if you yeah. spend i mean th these are really 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 good results but if you spend 10 grand and bring in 100 grand you're making 10% of $90,000 or 15% of 90 grand or 20% of 90 grand, you know, like it's a lot of money and it's more than you'd ever make from a flat fee as well. Um, but mm. that's also why it's so good for you as the agency owner, but it's also so good for them because they're only paying that if you're genuinely, if you are spending 10,000 and bringing them in a hundred thousand, you know, so that's, yeah, so that's to get like your foot in the door. Yeah, but it's all. It, I, yeah. It, it, yeah, it is. Like you'll find that your conversion rates are a lot higher with clients like that. But then you don't want to be bringing any and every client on board on those types of deals because it mm. genuinely is based on your performance. So if you genuinely feel like you can't get that client results, then you're not going to make any money and it's not going to make sense for you. And it, obviously, it's not going to make sense for them either. Mm. that's the idea behind it it does work well for both parties but you as the agency owner need to ensure that this client you can genuinely get good results for because it's going to hinder you just as much as it's going to hinder them okay um i did have another question but i did write some down um yes yeah, so another question which came up just while you're answering that was basically um when let's say i sign like free fifteen hundred dollar clients let's say regardless if they're ROAS deals or not let's say that's bringing in four thousand five hundred revenue for me like the agency yeah. um obviously you pay the media buyer he handles the ads when do you make the decision to like scale because obviously if you're signing these fifteen hundred deals it's going to be a lot harder compared to signing five thousand five hundred retainers like i watched your youtube video the other night like your seven figure game plan and stuff like that so how would you go about going from small retainers to big retainers? Do you sort of say um, to the clients or do you just ask them if they want to work with us with a bigger ad spend and a bigger retainer? How would you go about mentioning that, if that makes sense? There's a couple of ways to do it. Um, first way is to, you know, it's it's funny actually. Um, I'll, I'll talk about kind of my, where I'm at in the agency right now and whatnot. Our yeah. retainers have gone like this and they spiked and now they're coming back down again mm. because our flat fees I'm talking about, our flat monthly yeah. retainers mm. was like, you know, 1500, like you say, 2000, 2500. And then I would start to go like 3000, like four and a half thousand, six thousand, six and a half thousand. I think my highest flat fee was, mm. and then I start to go back down and now I'm back at like, uh 2k 2500 and i pitched one client yesterday that i've got a follow-up call with for 3600 um mm. what each and every one of those is plus 15 percent. so the agency is scaling mm. in terms of you know not having as many clients um but the monthly uh, uh billables is is a lot higher because of those ROAS deals. 
So you've got a couple, as I say, you've got a couple of ways to go about it. You can, can you can stick with those uh, uh, 1500 a month uh, um, uh, retainers, 2000 a month retainers, 2500 a month retainers, and just start doing or continue doing your 15% and make sure that you're producing good uh, results for your clients. And, you know, that's going to come in um, with the service delivery, but it's also going to be the clients that you bring on board, the caliber of client that you bring on board as well. Or you can go the other way and just increase your retainers. Now, um, I, I do not recommend that you increase the retainers of your current clients because they'll just drop off um, and you don't want that. So just for your new clients that you bring on board, just pitch them at 4K or 4.5K or 6.5K mm. or whatever. So in terms of like you pitching the price, like I know you said like um, 3,600 and stuff. I sort of bait in like one zero and five, like 1,000 or 1,500, 2,000. Does that actually just base off like just the figures there? It's pulled out there. of thin air. Yeah. It's, it's not pulled out of thin air, actually. It is based off of the value. Like we yeah. wouldn't charge a client... Um, that's making like 20 grand a month, like we wouldn't charge them 6,500 a month, you know? Cause like they won't mm. be able to do it. And there's a process that we need to go through to get them to a point where a 6,500 a month retainer is gonna make sense. Meaning a brand that's making 20,000 a month isn't gonna start ads at a thousand a day. Mm. Whereas a client that we charge 6,500 for needs to be minimum a thousand a day. I personally would say not unless you're at 500 a day and the ROAS is crazy mm. and their profit margins of their brand of their actual overall business is high as well, then it's fine. Um, so it does come down to the client. It does come down to um, their numbers. As I say, their profit margins, um, you know, a, a brand that's got like 70% profit margins, you know, is going to be a lot more lucrative than a brand who's making the exactly the same amount, but he's got 30% profit margins or 40% profit margins. So, so I know it, it's a little bit case by case. Yeah, thanks, man. So basically, um, do you have like a rough guide? So let's say they bring, you said before, like they're bringing in 20,000 um, per month, you wouldn't charge them, you know, 6,000 for a retainer. Do you have like a rough guide so I could write it down? Just so like when I'm on the, in the meetings, it just makes it, you know um do you have a rough guide or do you just i don't have like i've not thought of, well obviously i've thought about it yeah so like i, I, bring... I wouldn't say there's strict numbers i wouldn't say there's strict numbers um yeah. i would recommend for brands that are making below forty thousand a month i wouldn't push the flat fee retainer above 2500 a month i wouldn't push that but above 2500 a month um 40 to like oh yeah 40 to like 100 um you could probably go between 25 and 45 100 a month uh mm. flat fee this is um and then above that you can kind of it's you know any brand can kind of afford any retainer um yeah but for the smaller brands like if you can see they've got a good proof of concept they've got a really really good brand overall is in like products and sales process and all that type of stuff um dude just do like 1500 like just just a super super small retainer but just smack on that 15 percent. like i promise you that a client that's that's qualified um f on everything that 15 yeah. percent will be far more than the retainer that you charge whether it's a thousand or whether it's four thousand i can almost guarantee and it depends on their ad spend as well, of course, but I, I, I reckon it will be a uh, majority of the time. It always is for our clients. Like the ROAS uh, billable that we, that I send out is always more than the, than the flat fee. Yeah. Because the perception of the flat fee, it might be smaller, but obviously the 15% also looks small, but based on the results you get, obviously that reflects your, you know, your the 15%. ROAS. The 15% is not an overly small cut, to be honest. Like 15% is pretty hefty. But the reason it That's works awesome. so well is because they don't they only pay that once it, once they've got the results. And it, it's a no-brainer at that point for the brands. It's like you only pay us the chunk of it. Don't say this to them, but you know, yeah. they you know, they only pay you the chunk of the monthly fee once you've generated the results. So the hurdle that they need to jump 
um, to, they need to jump over to get you know you onto their team has just gone from up here to down here. So they can they that's why they always kind of go for it. The conversion rates are much higher. Okay, man, thanks for that. So I've got I think I've got like another two questions. So obviously in terms of now you're at such a high level compared to like me, but like what is your routine in relation to your agency? Like I just find it interesting. Like when you wake up, um, like how would you, do you like do your outreach? Do you like check in with clients? Like what's like roughly what's your routine? It's kind of interesting just so I can sort of like, you know, have an idea for myself and what percentage of your time is spent. Cause I know in the, um, in the program you've mentioned like the, um, the stake, like 80% of your time on email outreach, 20% on like Instagram and Facebook groups. So in terms of your routine, what percentage of your day is spent on emails and checking in? Like what time, how much time do you spend? Like, well, checking in isn't uh, checking in isn't really a um, a task that you need to do, really. To mm. be honest, um, yeah. How I would how I would incorporate kind of checking in with clients or, or, or messaging clients if you need to is kind yeah. of in the afternoon, um, where you go over client ad accounts and just make sure everything's running smoothly. Um, mm. and just incorporate checking, like just client satisfaction, Let's call it your yeah. client satisfaction hour, check client ad accounts, make sure everything's running smoothly. Um, check Slack, see if there's any messages that need to be responded to see if there's anything that needs to be done. Um, it, maybe it's a Monday and you need to update them or whatever it is, if, you know, Wednesday, you need to update them or Friday, you need to, whatever it is. Um, I would just do that in the afternoon, set aside an hour. That's all it will take. Um, yeah. but in terms of like your day, like for me right now, it's probably a good time that you ask this because I have switched back to the agency a bit just recently. So what I've been doing is essentially waking up, obviously, um, around, <laughs> yeah, it helps, um, waking up at around six 30. If I've not got calls earlier, my time zone's yeah. terrible. Like this morning I was up at half four, as you can probably tell. Um, so <laughs> 6.30 wake up, I usually will then read till eight and then I will get straight into agency stuff. Um, yeah. And what I've been doing recently, and this is kind of like the email outreach side of things, which is like uh, I've been finalizing the VSL funnel, the new one that I've just put up, um, the funnel itself, ad copy and creatives. Um, that's kind of been my focus because obviously mm. now we're relaunching the ads again um, with a far better system in place. Um, so, and that you, I usually do that till 12. And then at 12, I'll go to the gym till two. And then at two, uh, oh, I, no, I usually go to the gym till like half one. I come yeah. home, shower, lunch. I usually watch a podcast till around like two-ish. Um, and then I'll finish out the day. And what I've been doing in that time, finishing out the day, I usually work till like five ish. No, actually it's been six just recently. Um, building out the new program. That's kind of like my day. Hmm. Okay. So another question, like the new program, what, what are you going to give us a bit of a insight on that? <laughs> yeah. The new, pro the new program is basically, so this program is like zero to 10 to 15k a month um yeah. the higher program is like 15k a month to like 50k a month you know it's kind of yeah. like the seven figure agency this is like how to get to six figures that one's kind of like yeah. how to get to seven figures um yeah and there's, there's a yeah it's a, it's a beast <laughs> to build out it's uh yeah i spent like the past month on it and i've built five modules so far it's a it's a yeah. killer but it's going to be so good. So I'm super excited for it. But yeah, that's kind of how my days look like at the moment. Um, but I'm still getting that main thing for the agency. You know, as I say, I've switched back to it just recently. I can't not left it, but I wasn't putting as much work into the agency because I had a couple other things going on and whatnot. Um, yeah. So, you know, the, the, it was bringing clients on board and whatnot, but it was, wasn't where I'd want it to be. So now that I've switched back, that's how, it, that's how my days look. Um, and you can see that I'm still getting that chunk, that outreach day you know, section, you know, because that's the most important thing. Like I'm not in ad accounts. I'm not 
um, you know, really speak to clients that much either. Um, I'm focusing on those high level things that you as the agency owner should be focusing on. Okay. Yeah. I think that's it. Just one more question. So like with all the information, like obviously I'm, um, read like watching the program on the Q and A's trying to absorb all the information. It's quite overwhelming. What would you recommend me focusing on? Because obviously I know I've got to get a media buyer. Um, and then I've obviously got to do, um, obviously get the qualified leads and do the reach now. Should I do that all myself? Um, to, to, you know, what, add, add, what do your current days look like? Um, well, I'm quite fortunate. Um, most of my days are basically free. Um, so and obviously, what? I've got that, I've mm-hmm. got that big following on, on Instagram as well, which I've been building for about two years. So yeah. I could literally use that to my advantage. But if I'm reaching out through emails, that doesn't sort doesn't of, come um, into play. But what you could do is split it because you, that page is, you know, I mean at the end of the day, it's followers. Um, yeah. And like, you know, we know yeah. that that doesn't mean a lot, but it it's a very, very good social proof to reach out to a brand through. So what I would recommend yeah. you do is split your outreach between Instagram DMs, videos yeah. though, and email outreach. Because what um, I'll quickly talk, talk about now, or, or really really quickly about it but um before i joined this program i was reaching out to like restaurants just like watching youtube videos Mm. and um before i hopped into this program i was reaching out to restaurants through instagram dms basically like complimenting them taking something from the instagram feed saying something like yeah um, i don't know like their blah 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 burgers looks like uh, mouth watering and then i just say something like um what made you passionate or like, are you the owner? And if they said like, yes, I feel like that's a good base to come off because I know there's no gatekeeper. If you know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm already talking to the owner. Yeah. But if I do that with econ brands, do you think I could just use, take the script as like a base guide and then just, you know, adapt it to the brand itself because you can do voice notes, but it's not. Yeah. It's... I think, I think videos is better though, to be honest, because you just get to see you. It's just a bit more of a personal interaction um hmm. especially from your page because there's no face to it um yeah, yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be better so i think yeah i think do split test that um maybe even if you do a third of your outreach on that and two thirds on the email outreach because you kind of know hmm. well you don't um know if that's going to actually be better than instagram dms but you know email outreach works you know what i mean that's what i'm trying to get at mm. so maybe as i say do like uh, a third through instagram and, and and two thirds through um email and do that in the morning and then in the afternoon of your days uh go through the program i think that's how you should structure it because you need to do the work just as much as you need to go through the program um, but yeah. you'll be able to do the work far better in the morning once you, you know, ready to go, mm-hmm. as opposed to in the afternoon when you're a bit more uh, tired and worn out. Mm. Yeah, because I've basically been, because um, up until I joined this program, I was, I think I was just spinning my wheels. I was sending like anywhere from 30. I basically set myself a sales target. I um, reached out to 30, 50 accounts through Instagram and Facebook. Mm-hmm. And obviously I'd split it that. So let's say roughly 25 on Instagram, 25 on Facebook. Otherwise, if it's just on all on Instagram, I'll get blocked. Yeah. So obviously I was doing it like that. But I wasn't getting any replies. And then obviously I found the econ niche. And um obviously I've been watching you for a while and I just realized this is I don't know, it probably has so much more potential. And, Definitely. Um, yeah. So with the Obviously, I've got to go through all this and apply it, take action, like you say. With the high-level program, um, will that be sort of, will you be releasing a date for that in the group or will that be a complete? There's no date yet. Um, yeah, there's, there's no date just yet, just because I don't want to put a date on it um, because yeah. I don't want to rush it. I don't want to be like, oh, I need to get this done like by this date. Mm-hmm um they'll be it'll be in the new year it won't be this year i can guarantee that um but we i i am doing like uh yeah i i am doing like i i'm accepting people now is what i'm trying to say um and i'm basically doing like a four week um 
uh, uh, like mentorship. I hate that word, but it's really no other yeah. way to explain it. Um, where we hop on one call per week uh, for four weeks. And then when the program comes out, you obviously I enroll you not for free, but at that point, you know, um, that's kind of how I'm structuring it right now. So we are, yeah, taking enrollments, um, but it's a bit different than this program. It's not like uh, uh, like you just enroll, um, you know, we hop on a call and whatnot because I genuinely want it to be a good fit. Like somebody, you know, the different types of people are going to be able to benefit um, more from it, you know, um, whereas like other people, it may just go straight over the head because they have no idea what's going on, you know? like the high level program you have not that you have to you, 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 yeah you, you have to know what's going on you know what i mean like if you're new to social media marketing that program it's not gonna it's not gonna work um so for anyone who's gone through this and got to like i don't know let's say the 15k per month or even 20k per month level obviously going into your next program whichever how much that would be that would be obviously worth you know worth the time because we're aware of what it is and that yeah if somebody who's that that's the perfect candidate even somebody who's doing like five to eight grand a month can still obviously drastically benefit from it yeah um, just i just like, meet somebody who's like kind of doesn't know what social media marketing is they don't really know like how things are structured um they don't know like the business model as a whole like that program's mm. it's not it's not gonna work but yeah I'll, I'll, I'll there'll obviously be a lot more information coming out about it um i'm just been yeah uh, focusing on that, building the actual program itself, which is the biggest task. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's going to be good. Do you have an idea of what um price, what price it will like? You know, based on yeah the quality. Yeah, I I, I do. Um, but as I say, I'll, I'll come out with more information like that. Um, yeah. probably within the next month, because as I say, I am accepting people in right now. It's just a different structure. It's not straight into the program. Um, it's yeah. that four week program with myself on one to one calls. Um, and then when it does come out, I just obviously automatically enroll you into that. Mm. Yeah, man, I think that's it. But once again, like the program so far, I'm on week three and it's just so much value. Like the whole structure and the, the slides, it just makes it so much easier to read. And yeah. like while you're speaking, I can just take notes. It's so good. But I'm glad, dude. Like it's, my, uh, my goal is to speak well. Yeah, man. Just before I finish, like my goal really is just to hit like, because at the moment now with how things are, I'm happy to be reaching like four or five K per month. So like 15 K really to me is like absolutely insane. If I get to that level. So, um, yeah, man, I'm it's sure. The same, your program it's the same fun. with me, dude. Um, I don't know if you're on the call earlier, but, um, yeah. I was basically saying like, it's a knock on effect. Like when I started out, um, I remember that I said within the next 12 months, I wanted to be at six figures. This was when I, way back when I, when I got my, uh, my, got my first client, I wanted to be at six figures, 8,000 a month within three months. I think mm. it was, um, I was at 20 K a month. And I said, within the next 12 months, I wanted to be at eight K a month. And the following three months, I got to 20 K a month. Like it's the biggest knock on effect everything just falls into place. Just, uh, yeah, like I said, absolutely everything fall, falls into place. All this information that you're taking in right now, yeah. I don't know how you feel, but I know when I was, you know, going through that process, all the information that I was taking in, I was like, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> but once mm. things started to really move, everything yeah. started to come back. Everything started to fall in its own place. Everything started to make sense. It was like, okay, that needs to be done there. That needs to be done here. And everything just kind of came, as I say, it just came into place. And that's mm. when you experience that exponential growth. So right now, 15K seems a lot. Um, but trust me, once, once you get the ball rolling, man, it'll, it'll just, uh, it'll, it'll shoot up. Mm. That's just crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for your time. And um, it was great talking. Like, I really appreciate your help. Likewise, dude. And um, yeah, man, I'll stay in the chat and hear what other questions we've got. <laughs> Dope, dude. We'll speak soon. Speak soon a bit, Kai. See ya. Bye.
So as you can see, I covered a lot in that 30 minute clip, I believe it is, um, but I hope you found some value in it. Now, if you're interested, and this is by no means, I'm not trying to sell you on anything here, I'm just saying if you're genuinely interested, you are watching through that clip, and you were thinking that you would really like to become part of the community as well, we've got a very, very strong community. I think there was 20 people on the call last night, um, live, and everyone was going through, that's why it was so long. Um, and there's really no time limit to those calls either. You know, I make sure that I get through everybody's questions, and then when nobody's got anything left to ask, or uh, to, uh, to talk about. Um that's when we end it. So, you know, if you want to become part of that community, it's a very, very strong community that we've got. Go ahead, click the second link in the description. It's going to take you to the enrollment page for the Quantum Leap e community program. And I'm really, really excited to get you part of it. It's going to be an absolute pleasure to be uh, working with you and um, scaling your agency to six figures and then multiple six figures. Also, if you're interested in just not, not about joining the program, you just want to kind of understand how I conduct outreach, how, you know, myself and the students of the community go about, you know, conducting email outreach in a way that churns out clients no matter what. Um, click the first link in the description. It's going to take you to a free training. And in that free training, I lay out exactly how I signed my very first seven e-commerce clients with no prior case studies, had nothing. Um, and yeah, I basically lay out exactly how I went about signing those clients. So if you're interested in that, click the first link in the description. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.